Genesis chapter 3. Uncle Peter, you're a little older for that. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to begin with verse 1. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. You can sit down, don't read the whole chapter. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in this day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And then the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Call past the book. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So it went from the man to the woman to the serpent. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all every beast of the field. On thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, a man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord, Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. <laughs> I want to preach just for a little bit this morning from this thought, the naked truth. Amen. Man's sinful nature. Amen. David said, I believe it was, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Amen. I, I want to ask us this question this morning. Who are we really? Amen. Uh, who are we really? We're, we're human beings placed on this ball we call earth and uh, it doesn't look like uh, you know that we're, we're here for anything and we, we get it in our mind that we're only here to make a living and, and do our little thing but you think about what we do in life and, and uh, how far we go of course I'm almost 60 years old and 
in uh, this length of time, in, in nearly 60 years, I, I have seen a lot of life, I've seen a lot of things happen, and uh, I've watched folks come, I've watched folks go, amen, I've watched people uh, be born and I've watched people die, amen, I've buried them of all different ages, I've, I've uh, participated in funerals of 16-year-old kids, participated in funerals of 90-year-old people, and I want you to understand that God did not just place us here, amen, to live out life and just all of a sudden die and that's the end of it all. But there is a beyond this life, amen. There is a, a time when we step across what the Bible calls the river, amen. And when we cross that river into the other life, uh, it, it's going to be a time uh, of heartache and sorrow for many people because uh, you, you were born to serve God. Amen. Man was created to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. Man was not created just at the end of the Garden of Eden. And if you read chapter 2, Genesis, it, it's the creation of man. Uh, and it talks about the garden. It talks about that uh, he was tending to the garden there and, and, and really didn't have to do a whole lot of tending. Basically, basically probably just picked the fruit. Amen. And uh, but, but God placed a couple of trees in the midst of the garden. And he said... I don't want you to touch those trees. There's one called the knowledge of good and evil, and there's another tree called the tree of life, and uh, you're to stay away from those trees. And uh, though I don't know why God placed those trees there. Uh, otherwise, in the back that he, he may have wanted to see, uh, he gave man a, a will, and you have a will this morning just like I do. And uh, we have the ability to think. Uh, the animal kingdom is not like we are. They don't have souls, and uh, uh, they do think. They do process thoughts, and but most of their thoughts during the day are, what am I going to get to eat, and how am I going to get it? Amen. And uh, uh, that, that becomes a part of our kingdom even. Amen. We concern ourselves with how are we going to take care of ourselves today. And it's all about us and, and the whole program uh, of life uh, from one end from the time that we're born until the time that we die. The whole gamut is just about what can I do for me? Hallelujah. What can I do to make me feel better? And uh, uh, I, I've got so many pressures and sometimes life just doesn't seem real fair. And we get all these things that come against us, but if you understand that most of them are, are our own making anyway. Amen. We bring most of this stuff on ourselves that we have to deal with. But the thing is, God said, you know what? I didn't place you here to deal with stuff. Hallelujah. I didn't place you here to try to get a bigger car or try to build a bigger house or, or try to get a better job. That's not what life is all about. I actually placed you on this little ball earth, amen, that you could lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting, that you could serve a living God who loves you immensely, who loves you above everything in this world. Uh, but we get ourselves directed and we we, we go our little ways and uh, we set up our life and uh, bless God, we're going to do it our way. Uh, Elvis, uh, uh, the king of rock and roll, they call him, he, he wrote a song or he sang a song, he wrote it or not, but he, he sang a song, I did it my way. Amen. And his way ended up uh, uh, him dying of a drug overdose. It, it ended up in, in the wrong path uh, at 40 some odd years old, passing from this life into the next life, uh, unprepared to meet his God. Uh, amen. On his bed, in his bedroom were many books uh, where he had been studying different religions and different uh, uh, things to try to find God. Uh, I you to know tonight, amen, or today, that, that this is a search. The, the moment you're born, amen, there's a search that begins in your life to try to find truth. Hallelujah. There's a search in your mind and in your heart that goes on continually. And so we try to find joy. We try to find peace in this life. We try to find something that's going to give us comfort. And so that's why the drug world is so 
rampant nowadays. That's why there's so many alcoholics nowadays. It's because life gets tough. And when life gets tough, amen, people begin to search for a way to find peace. Oh, come on. If I can just have a little time where I can just kind of relax and get away from everything. And so they envelop themselves in a drug world where they envelop themselves in a, in a bottle of whiskey or a can of beer. Just simply to try to take away the pain and give me a little time of peace. Let me tell you something, friend. There is no peace in this life except Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Adam, God had, in Genesis chapter 2, God had, had done everything. And the Bible said he, it was the seventh day and he rested. And then uh, the Bible begins to go into the creation of man. It, it talks about how that uh, God saw everything else. He spoke it into existence. It was, you know, he spoke and the animals were. The Bible said he spoke and, and the, the skies were filled with birds. He simply spoke and the sea was filled with fishes and, and all the cattle and all the sheep and all the oxen and the horses and everything uh, were on the land just by the speaking of his word. But, but he, he, he took a little time, amen, and he began to create a man. The Bible said he took of the dust of the earth, and he formed that man, and then he blew breath into that man. It was his own breath. It was the breath of God that created that man. And that man, the Bible said, became a living soul. Hallelujah. Oh, but then he said, you know what? It's not good for a man to be alone. And so uh, the Bible said that he put Adam into a deep sleep and uh, he took one of his ribs and out of that rib, uh, he formed a woman uh, and he brought that woman to that man uh, and she would be his helpmate. Uh, but it wasn't very long before uh, a critter began to, to enter the scene and uh, Jesus himself said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Amen. And Satan was simply a rebellious angel. And uh, he had pulled a third of the angels with him in his rebellion against God. He, his desire was to be God or to be like God or to be as God was. Although he never is able to do that. Amen. Because you got to understand God is everywhere. He is omnipresent at one time. Amen. He is omnipotent. Uh, he is all powerful. Hallelujah. And, and Satan has very limited power. He's only limited to what God allows him to have. He, he's only limited to be in one place at one time. And so he's got all these little imps that are doing his business around the world. All these little demons that are, are, are getting in your bedroom and getting on your shoulder and, and speaking things to you that you really need to do and, and we need to understand today amen that it's not God's will in this life for us to do our thing and for us to be our own person amen but it is our responsibility amen to give our heart to God it is our responsibility God in his infinite wisdom created a man that could serve him he created a living soul hallelujah amen that could worship him and give him the glory he deserves. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He has already created the angels. The angels, uh, amen, are around the throne. The Bible said that the cherubim, the angels, are around the throne and they're constantly praising God. They're constantly worshiping God. But but this was a specialized creation, Brother Cundy. Amen. This was not just an angel. The, the, the Bible said, and David said, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. So we're not quite in the angelic realm. Amen. Uh, the, the difference between us and, and angels is, is that we have a free will. An angel does not have a free will. He only does the bidding of the master. Hallelujah. 
but we have a free will and, and God wanted to see if he could create a creature that would serve him of their own free will amen and so he gave us that nature he gave us that ability amen that we could just find God and worship him ourselves in our own way amen and following his word and in his road map that we could have salvation hallelujah amen. Oh, but I want somebody here to understand this morning, amen, when, when God created Adam to worship him, everything was going hunky-dory until that little demon showed up on the scene, amen, and, and Eve is uh, kind of bebopping through the garden one day, and she's passing by that tree that is forbidden, and she knows better than get near that tree, and this voice calls out to her and said, hey, Eve, come here, come here. I want you to look at this. I, I've got a tree here that is so beautiful. And she looked at that tree and she said, it is pretty. I've seen it. It's a beautiful tree. And he said, you see this fruit on this tree? This fruit is, is a, a fruit that is desirable. Amen. This fruit will make you wise. Oh, let me tell you something. At that point in time, mankind was totally innocent. Amen. They knew no sin. They were naked and didn't even realize they were naked because there was no sinful nature in man. But oh, that spirit of hell began to work and he began to deceive. Oh, let me tell you something. He's still a deceiver today. He's still at work today. He's still doing his best to destroy mankind. He's still doing everything he can to pull you away from a walk with God and to pull you into his realm. That's why you go to a bar on a Saturday night and it's full and overflowing with people who are just seeking a good time and seeking, oh, you know what they're doing? Many of them are trying to drown out the sorrows and the problems of this world. Many of them are saying, you know, if I go have a good time on Saturday night, it'll help me forget my problems and then I can get back to work on Monday morning. But when they wake up on Sunday morning, amen, they realize that the problems haven't gone away. In fact, now they're probably magnified because the money that they used to have to go on bills has now been spent and they don't have that money now to pay on their bills. Let me tell you something, friend. Satan is a hard taskmaster. I said he's a hard taskmaster and his desire is to get you in a quandary. His desire is, is to get you back into a corner. Amen. Where he can begin to buffet at you. He can begin to work you over. And some people, he carries them to the point where they finally just give up on life and put a gun to their head and pull the trigger. Or they take an overdose of pills one last time just to get out of this life and its pain. But I'm here to tell you today, God didn't bring you into this life for you to exit that way. He brought you into this life that you can have joy, that you can have peace. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Jesus. Brought you into this life to serve him. <laughs> amen. And, uh, the most joyful thing you'll ever do is serve God. Yeah. How old are you? Yeah. Man, the, the most happiness you'll ever receive in life is living for God. Amen. Oh, well, you mean we don't have any more problems? We, we, no, you have troubles. <laughs> amen. Life brings troubles. Life brings problems. Uh, and if you're living life very long, uh, amen, sometimes they begin to melt up. But I'm here to tell you there's a God that's with us. Oh, when we have received his spirit, when we have been filled with the Holy Ghost, when we have been baptized in Jesus' name, amen, there is something that comes in you. That Holy Ghost comes in, it brings a joy with it. Hallelujah. You still have the trouble stacking up. You still have the problems that life brings. But now, amen, you go through life with joy. You go through life with peace. It doesn't matter what the devil brings against you. Amen. You can take it to the Lord. Oh, there's an old song we used to sing. It said, take your troubles to the Lord and leave them there. Hallelujah. We can bring them to him and we can just let him have them and just walk away and say, God, I'm going to worship.
worship you in the midst of the trouble. I'm going to worship you in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. I'm going to love you no matter what comes or what goes. And I'm here to tell you that you can have peace 